everyone, it's Ryan with the uh, Comic Week, our Comic Pull Show week number four. So this is show four. So I got quite a few today. Um, I got a big run in of Captain America all in the same auction, which was pretty cool to win that. So I'll run through kind of the Captain Americas and then we're gonna run through our, um, this is kind of like the first key, or the keys, first appearance and stuff like that. Um, got a pretty good handful of those books. A lot of them revolve around WandaVision. So, we'll run through the caps real quick. Um, we got Captain America 102, which is uh, a pretty good book. I mean, this is, obviously it starts at 100, so right there towards the beginning. Um, book's in pretty good shape. Can't really complain there. Then we got Captain 136. This is when it's Captain America and the Falcon. Um, so, it's, a, it's actually a really solid book. Um, probably up in the very fine category. And then we got Cap 155, which is another pretty pretty good book. Um, Secret Origin of Captain America. So when we start getting up into these, you know, if I can just get a just get a decent copy, uh, I'm, that's all I really care about. Um, I'm not looking to get get a 9.0 or even a 7.0. I just want something decent because it's just it's it's filling out that run of of Cap. Um, so I'm not, I'm not focused on, Hey, let me get a nine. Let me get an eight where I, maybe I would with my 117 is pretty high up there. My 100 is probably in the 4.5 range to maybe five. Um, maybe I'll break those out and oh, Gunner's playing with a toy. Maybe I'll break those out here. Um, when I, when I finally complete the set, cause I, I did a count today. I'm only, uh, I'm less than th uh, 30 books away from finishing out the entire run of Captain America, which is, which is really cool for me. Um, so this is another book. This is, this is, it kind of goes along those lines. It's not in the best of shape, but it's still, still there. It's 230. It's kind of a cool cover with Hulk punch and cap. And he's got the, got the shield there to block it. Um, this is 259 cat battles, Doc Ock. So that's pretty cool there. Um, then this is 298. This is the life and times of the red skull actually have a little uh, picture frame of this hanging up on the wall. Um, this one actually wasn't sent with a board when I when I got it. It was just a couple dollar book. Um, so, you know, I'm getting a lot of these off eBay for just a couple dollars. You gotta pay shipping, so obviously that, that goes a little bit higher than what what you would buy at a comic store. But, you know, honestly, the, the two or three main comic stores I've been going to here in the Dallas area, they just really haven't been having a lot of these books, so able to have you know have to go on ebay and find them there so this is 317 yeah 317 so cap and hawkeye on the cover there and they've kind of switched weapons there so hawkeye's got the shield and cap's got the bow um then we got uh 350 supersized issue 350 cap the captain versus captain america so that's when um john walker had been become captain america and he's fighting captain he's fighting steve rogers and then we got uh, 369, uh, as if the Black Queen weren't bad enough. So now we're kind of getting into the higher run there um, of Captain America. It's a, another decent book. This is kind of a funny cover. Uh, 395, The House That Dripped Dough, him and Thor. Um, kind of in the middle of a bunch of dough in the house. And then we got 396, uh, Alone Against the all noon Jack-O-Lantern and the Menace of Black Wing. So again, you know, these books are kind of easy to find and, and fine to very fine. And then, then starts the run. I actually bought, I actually won an auction on eBay, which um, ran from 421 all the way to 454. 454 is the last issue. So we'll just kind of run through these really quick. And this is really nice. They're in, they came in Mylar's. They didn't come boarded, but they came in Mylar's. So that's 421. And then 422. I'm not going to just go through each one, but 423. Namor's on the cover. 424. And when it when it all said and done, I got these all for like I think there's like 30 books here, so I got them for less than two dollars a piece, which is pretty good. 425. Maybe right at two dollars when you include shipping and tax. Probably right at two dollars. 426. 
427. It's on the motorcycle there. It's pretty cool. 428. 429. So a couple of these you've seen already because I bought a couple of these earlier. Um, so like I think like four books. So I've got duplicates of about four books, but it was it was definitely worth it to go ahead and and get this this long run. So there's 430. 431 432 433 yeah so I mean it's really really cool that these that they also whoever sold them to me they that they were all in mylar bags too uh, 434 that kind of saves me from having to I just saw that Rala's War on the back I played that game so much on Super Nintendo uh, growing up. I play, that game, I just, I wore out that game. That was a fun game. 435, Doink the Clown, Lex Luger, 436. Of course, Razor Ramon, Big Daddy Diesel, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart. Owen Hart was on that game too, I think. 437, I think Yokozuna was on that game. Is it that or Royal Rumble? I can't remember. 438. 439. I mean, we're just... We're getting there. 440. 441. 442. They were still 150 at the time. Now they're... Now most of them are $4, $5, $6. Uh, what was that? What number was that? 442, so this is 443. Right? Yeah, 443. Kind of a neat cover. They kind of started making him, almost kind of looks like Batman, so it's kind of sort of in that. Uh, 444. These are the, this was, these were the direct editions too. 445. So I'm assuming that whoever this was had these in his collection and um, maybe these were his, it, it didn't say if these were his original books or not, but 446 is really cool to be able to get. Oh, and then um, Marvel Masterpieces. I think this was the, I, th I don't know if this was the cards. Cause I remember the, I'll show the back of that. I remember the um, the playing card, or the not the playing the trading cards. Four forty seven. Spawn the video game on the back. I kind of like looking at the backs from time to time. Four forty eight. We're getting there almost. Four forty nine. Oh man, Chef Boyard D with Spider Man. I yeah, I was eating that all the time too. And then four fifty. Really cool cover. Spider-Man cereal. I wonder if there's a way to find that. I know uh, L.A. Beast, I watch him a lot. He eats a lot of old stuff. I need to try to find Spider-Man cereal. Uh, where are we at? Four, this is 451. That was 450. Yeah, so this is 451. 452. 453. All To all things, an ending. And then the last book in the Volume 1 series, 454, August 1996. Farewell to a Living Legend. So that is uh, that is all the Captain America books. Um, like I said, I bought this run off eBay for like less than two, probably right at $2 a book. I think I won the auction at like $50. There's 30 some books in here. And by the time the shipping's included and taxes included, it probably came out to a little bit, of, a little bit over sixty. Um, so you're, I was looking at right at, right at probably two dollars a book. So I mean, that's really good. Consider if you go to the, you go to the store and you just happen to find all these, um, you're probably going to be paying three to four dollars a book. So instead of spending sixty dollars, I probably would have been spending close to one hundred and twenty dollars. So probably double the price. Um, so. You know, I was pretty, I was really happy to get that. And, you know, we're getting, like I said, I've only got about 
30 books left maybe of to get of cap before I complete the whole volume one run, which is really exciting for me. Um, cause that's something I've been, you know, I really, I really want to be able to do is complete the runs of these series just so when things happen in the shows and the, in the movies, then I don't have to worry about, Oh my God, do I have that book? Cause I've got an app on my phone that I go back. And I've, I've said that app before. Um, in fact, I will, I will see what it's uh, CLZ comics. I kind of like this one. We'll kind of show, I don't know if you can kind of see that or not that well, maybe not, but, um, you probably can't see it that well. But it, it, I like, it tells you at the top of each run. So I've got 326 comics. There's 350, there's 450, or there's 354. So I've got about, you know, 30, a little, little right at 30 comics uh, left to go. Um, or just under 30. And then at the top, it tells you what you have. And then, you know, if it's got a full run, like my, my biggest run is from 144 to 363. So it says 144 dash 363. So eventually it's going to say 100 dash 454. That's what, that's what it is. So that's kind of neat. Cause you know, it's, unless you've got it really well cataloged and you, you have a really good memory of what you have and you go to the, you go to the comic store and you're looking for something specific or you're just looking for a, like to continue the runs of Avengers or Captain America or Batman, whatever it may be. And you go thumbing through and you're like, I think I have this one. Oh, I think I don't. Oh, maybe not. And you're like, I don't know. Maybe I probably ought not get it. Or if you don't remember, hey, this is the run I'm looking for. You don't write it down. I have this in my pocket, you know. So I just pull it up and start scrolling through and see what I have and what I don't have. So now we're going to go. We're going to move on to the, the key books and the first appearances and the older books that I picked up this week. Um, the first one uh, is a book that's become pretty hot lately. Um, I think it had a lot to do with WandaVision because he was, uh, there was a tease and this was the thing was someone, someone had pulled, had watched an interview, um, or the YouTube community had watched an interview with one of the, the show writers on WandaVision and they were in some sort of Marvel studio and on the wall was a picture of Wonder Man. So everyone was like, Wonder Man's in the show, Wonder Man's in the show because, you know, he is... In the comics, they use his mind to basically create the vision. So this is Avengers number nine. This is the first appearance of Wonder Man. This book is, I mean, I, it's its a fair to good. Um, I believe that the, um, there's, you can kind of see here on the bottom, there's a little chunk missing there. There's a little chunk up here on the right corner. And I think there is an ad page missing in this. It doesn't affect the story art, but there is an ad page missing, I believe. Um, but once again, um, I just, this is a hard book to find. It's a hard book to find at a good grade at a decent price, honestly. If you're getting a good grade in this book, you're going to pay three, four, five hundred dollars um, right now. Hopefully it's going to go back down. It may not, though. If they do end up introducing Wonder Man at some point, which I think they will at some point, um, this book's obviously going to go crazy again, but it's going to be in my collection, whether it's the best or not. I'm, I'm not looking to try to, I'm not looking to flip books. I've talked about that before on here. I don't look to flip books. I look to put them in my collection and keep them there. Um, I've had to sell books in the past and it sucks, you know, because then when you get to a point, you're like, man, I wish I had that. And you, or you try to get it back. Usually you got to pay, you're paying more than what you gave it away for, unfortunately. Um, most of the time, at least. And that really sucks. But, you know, this is a book. I never had this book before. I had, had opportunities to buy this book. I don't know how many times, and I never did. Probably for, a, a, I bought this book for like, I think it was like a hundred bucks. Um, for less than, probably for that, for a, for a four I could have gotten back years ago. Um, but it's in there now. It's in the collection now. That's, that's to me, that's what's more important than anything. So if I'm thumb. If I say, hey, look at this, I got a whole run of Avengers, and that's that's the next thing is, that's the next book I'll, or the next run I'm gonna start working on pretty heavily is Avengers. And to say someone, hey, check this out, I got the whole run, they start thumbing through, oh, you got one, two, three. So right now I've got two through nine. I don't have number one. That's that's a book that I'm looking, I'm, I'm saving up to try to find, to try to get a decent copy. And that's another thing, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go on eBay and try to buy a one, even if it's CGC'd, you're gonna pay a lot more. 
um, because of the fees and people trying to hack up the prices. Your best, your best bet to go to a comic convention, or if you get lucky and your local store just happens to have one come walk in the door, which doesn't happen very often. But if you can go to the conventions, usually you can find the really, really high-end books at conventions, and they're going to be a little bit higher there. But I still don't think they're eBay prices. Like I've seen Avengers ones at at comic conventions, and they're not nearly what they are on eBay. So if you're looking for that, that would be my suggestion: is go to a convention and try to try to find one. So that that's a really cool book. So the next book uh, is another Avengers book. This this was. Uh, kind of always on my list of a book that I wanted. I love the cover. It's one of my favorite covers. Um, so I'm excited to actually get this in the collection again. I'm not looking, this is another book, I'm not looking to try to try to break, break the bank and get an 8.0, but it's still a really cool book. So this is Avengers 16. Um, this is the um, iconic Avengers Assemble cover. So this is uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch join the Avengers in this issue. Um, this is the new lineup with Hawkeye and and those two. Um, and this is just a cool book. I've, I've the, it's, it's weird. This is one of the books that every chance I've had a every time I've had a chance to buy it, it's always had the subscription crease down the middle. So when I saw this one for, I got this one for right at a hundred also. Um, without the subscription crease, I just, I'm, this is a no brainer for me because this is a book I've been looking for. And I just, every time I'd always get stuck, subscription crease, subscription, subscription crease every single time. And it was frustrating, but this is a cool book. Um, so, you know, it's just an, it's, I mean, it's a decent copy. It's probably a four, maybe a three, five, four. Um, but again, a lot of these books, I'm not looking to break the bank on and go crazy and and buy a buy an eight or a nine. If I can find something at like a four, five, a five, a six, I'm I'm a mid grade type guy. I like a little bit of wear on the book. I don't need it to be absolutely pristine. I like a little bit of wear. I think it gives the book character. I don't need a book to look like it just got printed yesterday. I don't need that. I'm not looking for that. But at the same time, I'm not going to go out and buy one that's completely roached and that, that the spine's got a bunch of issues. It's ripped everywhere and stuff like that. So I like that mid-grade kind of kind of level. Um, obviously, if you compare that to, say, we'll pull one of these caps, 396. I mean, this is, this is like, you know, this is in phenomenal shape. It's probably very fine plus, you know, maybe near mint minus, whatever. Um, I, I don't need, I don't need this book to look like that for me. I just don't need that. Some people do. So people want it to where it looks, they want a nine. They want it. They want a nine five. I don't, I'd rather, I'd rather buy a four or a four five or a five and save the extra $700 and buy more books. That's just me. So Moving on, the next book is um, so this is a, this is a this is a key book. Uh, this is a character I think might be showing up soon. Um, so this is Fantastic Four Annual Number Six. So this is first Annihilus. Um, again, this is another probably right out of four book, maybe a four or five. Uh, it's got a little corner, kind of sliced off. It's got a, it's got a spine crease here. Um, but you know, the side looks really nice. Um, all the lettering's still there for the most part. Um, but it's a, it's a solid book and this isn't, this is another, another book where I go, Hey, let me have one at a lower grade or even a mid grade. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, I think there's a chance that Annihilus could show up in Fantastic Four, the movie, or maybe in the second one. I don't, I would love for them to do the Galactus and Silver Surfer line or, or storyline, but Fox did that. And I think Feige is going to, I think Feige is going to try to explore maybe a storyline outside of that first, maybe even second, and then bring in Galactus. Silver Surfer is such a huge character though. That's the problem. And everyone, I love Silver Surfer. He's one of my favorite characters, but they could, he could introduce him Maybe in the first movie. I mean, I think Doom's going to be the main villain in the first movie. But it could be Doom being that kind of that 
overarching secondary villain because they could introduce Doctor Doom somewhere else. I mean, Doctor Doom's fought just about everybody in the in the universe. Spider Man, the Avengers, Black Panther, all of them. So he they could throw they could throw Doom in there in a different movie, and then bring him in maybe in the first one, and then but still have Doom lurking against the 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 Fantastic Four. So this is another book. This is a, this is always a this is always a hot book, um, just because it's it's first a nihilist and he's he's a great character. Um, so that's that's something I could see coming down the line. It's going to be interesting to see how well Marvel does with that movie. Um, Fox, you know the the one with Jessica Alba and and Chris Evans. They were they were campy. They were okay. They weren't great. Um, but then that second one. And that second one started off. I, I've always, I always bought into the second one. The first hour of the second, or, or fan fantastic, whatever they call it, whatever they like to call it, the first hour isn't that bad of a movie. Like I, I remember watching it for the first time, and the first hour, I'm like, you know, maybe I, maybe I, I, I judged this too quickly. Maybe it's not that bad. And then the second hour happened, and then I realized I judged it properly because it was just trash. So, sorry if you like that movie. I don't. Um, so now we're going to get into the WandaVision books. So these last five books I have here basically all, all work around WandaVision. And so I talked about this book a few weeks ago, I think maybe in the, in the first show or second show. So this is Fantastic Four number 94. So this is first appearance of Agatha Harkness. Um, this is actually in pretty decent shape. I got this book for pretty much a steal right now. Um, this book's going crazy online everywhere because obviously because she's she appeared um it was a great finale i watched the finale on friday it was a, it was a great finale i like like the way they ended it um i like that they didn't i like that they made her the main villain and they didn't bring mephisto in or bring in nightmare or someone like that. i like that she kind of stayed the main villain um i think that was a smart move on their part i think that if they would have they would have brought somebody else in. It would have cheapened that a little bit, and I think it was. I think it was a really good finale, and I'm looking forward to what's what's more in store as far as uh, Wanda goes, kind of turning into Dark Scarlet, like she does in Avengers West Coast, um, and then kind of seeing her take take the dark hold and kind of begin to study it. At and look, if in that end credit scene, if that's not one to Gore Mountain, then I may I may revolt against Marvel. I mean that that could not be set up any better. That she goes up into the mountains. That's got to be one to Gore Mountain. Um, I'd be ashamed. It'd be an absolute shame if they did. I'm sure it is. It's it's too it's too on the nose. I'd be ashamed if they didn't though. I was actually talking to someone about that today. That I'd probably revolt if they didn't. Because that that's actually one of my favorite storylines in the Avengers, like that mid run comics. Let's see, it's one, um, what is it, one, 185, 6, and 7, I think it is. 185, 186, 187. So, they, her and Quicksilver basically they go up there looking for answers to their past, 185, 86, 87. And um, they, start, they start finding answers. And then that's when things get a little crazy uh, for Wanda. And... I can't ever say that dude's name. The 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 Sh Shathon is it Shathon or Shathon Shathon Shathon. He shows up. Uh, his first appearance is one eighty six, which you know he's tied with the Darkhold. So we could see him show up as, at some point. That could be a potential. Maybe Doctor Strange that could show up if they decide to do a second season of WandaVision. Which they could It'd be a little different. Obviously, it's not going to be the TV show thing like they have now. Um, so it could be it could be done a little differently, but we could see a second season. I don't I don't know. I know Feige had said at one point that they talked about some of these shows will get second seasons, or multiple seasons, and then some won't. Um, the way this one ends, it kind of ends. It has a you know it has a really good beginning and end, and that little cliffhanger kind of leads toward the first the first cliffhanger kind of goes towards Captain Marvel. The second one kind of goes towards Doctor Strange, and then we got Vision. Whatever happened with White Vision, whatever's going to go on with him, because when him and uh, the, I guess you could call him the Wanda's Vision, um, the one that she made, 
when he kind of gives him the memories, he basically just leaves. That's it. He's like, I'm out. I'm gone. Um, so that leads into Avengers, West Coast Avengers 45, which is the first appearance of the White Vision. Um, so it's a little different in the comics. Uh, uh, Hank Pym kind of puts him back together, and that kind of gives him that, that, that white look. And he doesn't really have the memories. Um, so he's a little cold towards Wanda and everything. Everybody, he's a little different. Um, so when that came out last week in that, that trailer, I didn't. I thought I had this book. I thought I had this book. And I went and checked my app, and I didn't. So I jumped online real fast, found a real found it, found this copy, which is a pretty nice copy, um, and found it for fairly cheap. So I got it. I got it before the price went crazy because I get up early for work every day. You know, I'm up I'm up before seven, and on Fridays, that's the first thing I do. You know, I'll get up super early on Friday. I get like I like I got up at I'll get up at six on Friday just to watch the show before I start before I start my day, um, and that's what. So once that popped up and I saw that. I, I, when, when they were talking about it, when that end credit scene started and he said, all we needed was the jump start, and that realized they're restarting vision. That was the first thing that popped in my head was white vision. I'm like, they're not going to do that. And sure enough, there he was. Um, so that was, that was, that was kind of a no brainer. I pop, I, I don't even, I've watched, I, I, I don't even, I just hopped online. I don't even see it to begin with. When I watched it the first time, I got online right away and try and bought that. Um, so another, uh, so this is uh, Vision and the Scarlet Witch, number 12. So this is when she actually gives birth to the boys, um, Speed and Wiccan, um, Billy and Tommy. So this is technically their first appearance since they're babies. So it's kind of interesting that in credit scene a little bit with, with her trying to figure out how she's actually going to bring them back or maybe bring them into the real world, make them re real, since they're just kind of part of her. Um, so that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting to see. I think that's gonna be kind of a, a big theme now with her at least, because if she can bring those two back, why can't she bring back Pietro? Um, I don't really know what's gonna happen with Vision because when Vision leaves, you're it's kind of left to the imagination that now he is. Since he has memories, he's kind of back to being Vision again. Um, you can see his eyes change. They go back to kind of the regular eyes that he has. So, instead of that, the mechanical or the robot, the android looking eyes. So, we'll see. We'll see what... We'll see how that pans out. It's going to be kind of interesting. Um... If they're going to put him back in the in the Avengers team, and then him kind of take take over a little bit, or what's what's it going to be? Because in the comics, you know, in Avengers, he takes over the Avengers, the original Vision, and then it's like I don't know, like two forty two, two forty one, somewhere around in there in the two forties, I think it is. That's when he sends uh, Hawkeye and Mockingbird out west to be, to start the West Coast Avengers division, which kind of jump starts that comic line. Um, and which is a good comic. I mean, it's I, I guess a lot of people are. I always kind of thought it played second fiddle to the main book, but the stories in it are pretty good. And we got another book that's West Coast Avengers here. So this is uh, number sixty one. So she is now in this book. She is Dark Scarlet. So she's changed. And then this is the first time that's mentioned that she is a Nexus being. Um. So if you remember back a couple episodes ago in the, I think it was the, um, yeah, it was the, the Modern Family style episode, they did a commercial for the Nexus uh, depression drug or whatever you want to call it. And it was called Nexus. Well, this is when she is officially known as a, or she finds out that she's part of the Nexus or, the ne or a Nexus being, excuse me, of a Nexus being. So, um, you can kind of see her up there in the corner. Kind of zoom in a little bit on that. So you can kind of see her there. So, so her her outfits changed a little bit. Um, then kind of that traditional Scarlet Witch outfit. I really I really liked what they did with her on the show. 
I thought the, the costume looked great. Um, phenomenal, actually. Um, I like that they gave her the headdress. They did that in a way that's not too, not too crazy comic booky. Like if we go back to Avengers 16 and kind of see there, you know, the full headdress kind of up and around and kind of, you know, that, you know, that, that would never work. That would really never work on, on film. Um, but what they did with it was really cool. Kind of like, like with Thor, right? So we've, we've seen Thor wear, wear his helmet twice. He wears it briefly in the first one when he's, when he's walking up at the ceremony. And then of course, when he fights Hulk in Ragnarok, he wears a style of that. It's not actually his helmet, but it's a style of that, right? It's got the wings. Um, and then you see the comics and he's always got it on, right? And, I mean, I get why, because they want to showcase Chris, Chris Hemsworth and his long hair and all that stuff. They don't want to, they don't want to hide that. But I really wish that, I wish he would be in that. I wish he would be wearing that helmet a little more, um, just because that's just me. But they can't, they can't not showcase him. I mean, I get it. So last book for tonight um, is. Uh, Marvel Spotlight on Werewolf by Night number four. So this is the first appearance of the Darkhold. So this this is now a key book um, that I got. I got it early last week, or no? I actually bought this. I bought this book two weeks ago, and I just now got it. Um, so when is that episode? Yeah, episode seven, right? As, yeah, because they had nine episodes. Episode seven, the Modern Family episode, when she goes downstairs, you see the dark hole for the first time. It's not mentioned that it's the dark hole. It's just a book, right? And it's glowing and it's got stuff coming out or whatever. But it's not. It's not officially mentioned that it's the dark hole. So it was assumed that it was the dark hole. The online, the YouTube community talked about it as being the dark hole. So I went. Because I don't have that book, so I went and I bought that book. Most of the people on eBay assume that it was a dark hold, because then you got first appearance of dark hold, WandaVision, MCU, all that stuff, right? So I'm like, well, I don't really know if it is. We don't know if it is yet. I'm gonna take a gamble on it. So I went and picked it up. And then it wasn't until the last episode that it's fine that it is mentioned that it is the dark hold. Agatha Agatha Harkness says that to her, that she's that the Scarlet Witch is mentioned in the Dark Hold. Um the book of the the book of the damned, and then, you know, obviously she gets the book, which I guess that's not. I don't think I don't remember that ever being kind of shown her taking the book, and then she goes off to I'm gonna call it Wonder Gore Mountain because it's got to be Wonder Gore. It's gonna be Wonder Gore Mountain, and so she takes off to Wonder Gore Mountain and she's up there just chilling in the cabin, sipping her tea, while her astral form which i'm gonna assume is her astral form just like dr strange is they're reading the book trying to figure out how she gonna how she gonna bring back her kids right how's she gonna bring back her brother or maybe she thinks she needs to bring back vision you know um so that's the first that's the first time that it's it's mentioned in or it's shown and mentioned in the comics this is a really good book i got this i got this book for under a hundred dollars before the before the the spikes happened um, cause we talk about that, you know, when, the, when they show up in the movies and the TV shows, you always get a jump. And that's one of the reasons why I like to try to get full runs of books because if something happens and some random character shows up, Hey, and I go look online, what's this, what's this person's first appearance? And it's Avengers number eight, King the Conqueror, right? I, lucky to have an eight that I bought years ago for next to nothing. I bought a very good 4.5 for almost next to nothing, like 50 bucks. Um, and now that book is, that book's gone crazy. And again, you know, to go look it up and go, you know, it's Captain America 216 is this person, is this character's first appearance. Okay. I got it. I ain't got to go try to hunt for it. And, and go fight fight eBay prices to try to get one, you know? Um, so that's it for tonight. So we had quite a few books tonight. Actually, I have more books that I got this week, but I didn't I didn't want this, this to go way too long because I could sit here and talk for probably an hour. And we're going on about 30-some-odd minutes probably now. 
Um, so I'm going to save those for next week. Uh, I'll pick up some more books next week. We're, we may be going to a convention next week here in Dallas. So looking forward to that. It's the first convention I've been I've been to since obviously since COVID. You know, we we, I, we normally try to go to Fan Expo, um, and then I really like the North Texas uh, Comic Book Show. I like that one too. That one's really hardcore comics. You don't get the celebrities in that one. You get you get artists like the artists will show up, but you don't get like the TV show celebrities, the movie celebrities, stuff like that. Big appearances. You get you know, you get good comic book appearances, and I, I like that show. That kind of reminds me of, I guess not really reminds me, but makes me think about you know what probably like what San Diego was before it got all Hollywoodified. You know, back when it was really just about the comics and stuff like that, and so. Um, so I've, I probably, I've still got probably another 15, maybe 10 or 15 books in there that I didn't, I didn't pull out for this show. That's going to be the next, it'll be in next week's show. Um, so hopefully I'll go to that convention next week and maybe I'll pick up some good stuff. Um, but you know, you never, you never really know with conventions. You can, I, I've been to conventions and I, I walk out of there with a couple books, no big deal, you know, and then I remember one year I walked out of there and when I was collecting the hot toys pretty hard, um, I walked out of there with like three or four hot toys, you know, it's just what it is, you know, but so that's it for tonight. Um, please, uh, please like, and subscribe our channel. I mean, I know we're getting up there around a hundred subscribers and we really appreciate that. Um, this has kind of been a lot of fun for both of us to do this. Um, I know Crystal has a lot of fun showing off her dresses and stuff and, I have a lot of fun showing off my comics. This is this is to me this this will always be my first my first love um, when it comes to the hobbies is is the comics and enjoying this and being able to show you guys and enjoy you know having you guys hopefully enjoy seeing seeing books. Um, you know it's it's a great hobby, um, but again I don't I don't I didn't get into this hobby to flip books. Some people do, you know. Some people want to buy buy a book and, and just turn around and flip it and make money. I, that's not me. I would rather, I'd rather have the book. And like I said, we're getting close to the cat, to the end of the cap run, which is really exciting. Cause I mean, obviously the shorter runs, like say the, the limited series runs or maybe like a Marvel premiere that's like 25 books or 20 books or whatever it may be. It's the shorter runs. There's not a lot of books. Um, a lot of people, those those are easier to get. I mean, we're talking, this is, for me, this is the first main character, main book, and you've got over 300 issues. And I'm excited to, to be able to say, I got the whole thing. You know, I've known a few people that I know in the community. Like one guy I know, he has like the entire run of X-Men. It's just like one through, you know, 400, whatever it is. And it's like, you're just, it's just, whoa. You know, that's, that's really amazing. Like, yeah, I think he had... I don't think he had the entire run of Flash, um, but I think he was pretty close to it. Um, so, you know, and I would love to have the entire run of Spider-Man. I'm going to have to break out the Spider-Man books one of these days. And, I mean, I've got four is the earliest one I have, which is first Sandman, four. I've got four, five, when he fights Doctor Doom, seven, second Vulture, eight, Living Brain, ten, the Enforcers, um, first Craven, which is 15, I think it is 15 or 16 for no, for no 14 is first Green Goblin. Yeah. 15. I think it's 15 is first Craven. It's either that or first Mysterio. I can't remember. Um, so, you know, I'm going to have to break those out First, I got first Punisher. That's a great book. First Kingpin 50. Um, we're going to break those out. Spider-Man is going to be another book that I go after. Um, probably after Avengers, I'm going to try to. I think what I'm going to try to do is is try to hit a main series and try to hit those books and then a little side series like Marvel Premiere, Spotlight, or, um, I mean, even Marvel 2-in-1, Marvel Team-Ups. Those are fun books, you know, and pick those up and just kind of keep moving along. I would love to be able to... I always had a dream of being able to own every single Marvel book in the Silver Age and the Bronze Age up to, say, like the, the early 90s when, when I was really kind of getting into comics as a kid and reading, reading Spider-Man, I read Spider-Man probably more than anything. Um, and really, 
that that's kind of one of my one of my dreams. I don't, I'll never get there. It's a, next to impossible to, to be able to collect all those books. But it would be it's it's fun to it's fun to try. It's fun to try, and um, so it's it's just it's a fun hobby. So if if you're gonna get into comics, get into comics. You know, just buy a couple of them. Just say you got them. Collect them. See what you got. You know. So we appreciate everyone watching the channel. Um, please like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below. Um, hit the little bell for notifications too. That's another thing we don't really say enough. So we appreciate everyone. And we will see you next week on show number five. So everyone have a good week. Stay safe and be, be kind to everyone.